Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for May 13th, 2023. Here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with a goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, increasing our faith and pleasing the Heavenly Father. For the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. The book of 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3, in the Amplified Classic Version reads, You are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you, the teachings I have discussed with you. Dwell with me, and I will dwell in you. Live in me, and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself without abiding in, being vitally united to the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. Verse 7. If you abide in me, abide vitally united to me, and my words remain in you, and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. When you bear and produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. Amen. And the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30 reads, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Amen. And so the words of life that we shall hear today, May 13th, are Psalm 130, Proverb 13, because it is the 13th day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, seemingly one for each day of the month. The New Testament reading will be from the the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1 through 37, and the Old Testament reading will be from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 4, verse 1 through chapter 5, verse 12. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved, unless otherwise noted. And indeed, there was a reading in the, from the intro, in the introduction today from the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible. And now... Psalm 130, and it reads, Out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let my ears be attentive to the voice of my Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Verse 3. If you, Lord, should mark inequities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more more than those who watch for the morning yes more than those who watch for the morning verse 7 O israel hope in the lord for with the lord there is mercy and with him is abundant redemption and he shall redeem israel from all his iniquities amen and in the name of jesus christ this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of jesus christ is every hearer Hallelujah and glory to God. And now, Proverb 13. And it reads, A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. 
A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Verse 5. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Verse 7. There is one who makes himself rich, yet has nothing, and one who makes himself poor, yet has great riches. The ransom of a man's life is his riches, but the poor does not hear rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. By pride comes nothing but strife, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Verse 11. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed, but he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life, to turn one away from the snares of death. Verse 15. Good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. Verse 18, poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Verse 21, evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Verse 23. Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor, and for the lack of justice there is waste. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Verse 25 and last. The righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the stomach of the wicked shall be in want. Amen. And this word in the name of Jesus Christ is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our every hearer in Jesus' name. And now the New Testament reading, continuing today with the book of Luke chapter 17. And it reads, Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Verse 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. Verse 6. So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Verse 7. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? 9. Does he think that the servant, because he did the things that were commended, commanded him? Let me take that again. Verse 9. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, 
Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Verse 16, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. 17, so Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found to return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. 22. Then he said to the disciples, The day will come when you will desire to see one of the one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in that day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Verse 30. Even so will it be on, in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Verse 31, In that day he who is in the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Verse 32, Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. 35. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. 36. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. Verse 37 and last. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Amen. And the word of the Lord is already blessed as we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ is every hearer. Know of a surety, brethren, that the body is the church of Christ. We are the body and Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the head. Judgment, according to the word, will start at the church, which is the body of Christ. Amen. Let, ever, let us hear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, open our eyes and open our ears that we may hear and receive your word in spirit and truth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Give us the grace, Father, to abide by your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now the Old Testament reading, continuing today with the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4, and it reads... And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines and encamped beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines encamped in Aphek. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. Verse 3, And the people had come into the camp. The elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us? today before the Philistines. Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh to us, that when it comes among us, it may save us from the hand of our enemies. Four. So the people went to Shiloh, and they, that they might bring from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Verse 5. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. 
Now when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What does the sound of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. Verse 7. So the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us, who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Verse 9. Be strong and conduct yourselves like men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Conduct yourselves like men and fight. Verse 10. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. 11. Also the ark of God was captured and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. Verse 12. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. And when he came, there was Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. Verse 14. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, What does the sound of this tumult mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, What hap And he said, What happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled from the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of the God has been captured. 18. Then it happened, when he made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. Verse 19. Now his daughter-in-law, Phinehas's wife, was with child, due to the Due to the due to be delivered, and when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and gave birth, for her labor pains came upon her. Verse twenty. And about the time of her death, the woman who stood by her said to her, "Do not fear, for you shall have you have born a son." But she did not answer, nor did she regard it. Then she named the child Ichabod, saying, "The glory has departed from Israel." because the ark of God has been captured, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. Verse 22. And she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. Chapter 5. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod rose early in the morning, there was Dagon fallen on its face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. And when they arose early the next morning, there was Dagon fallen on its face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of its hands were broken off on on the threshold, only Dagon's torso was left of it. 5. Therefore none of the priests of Dagon, nor any who came into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. 6. But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod, and he ravaged them and struck them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. Verse 7. And when the men of Ashdod saw how it was, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is harsh toward us and Dagon our God. Therefore they sent and gathered to themselves all the lords of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carefully carried to Gath. So they carried the ark of the God of Israel away. 9. So it was, after they had carried it away, that the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he struck the men of the city, both small and great, and tumors broke out on them. Verse 10. Therefore they sent the ark of God to Ekron. 
so that it was so so it was as the ark of god came to ekron that the ekronites cried out saying they have brought the ark of the god of israel to us to kill us and our people 11. so they sent and gathered together all the lords of the philistines and said send away the ark of the god of israel and let it go back to its own place so that it does not kill us and our people for there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city the hand of god was very heavy there and the men who did not die were struck with tumors and this cry of the city went up to heaven amen and in the name of jesus christ this word is already blessed as we pray in jesus name is every hearer the book of psalm chapter 107 verse 20 reads he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions amen and the book of isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 through 6 reads but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. And let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, King of glory, almighty Jehovah, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for sending your Holy Son, Jesus, and placing on him all the iniquity that we deserved. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to ask forgiveness if in any way we have turned away to our own way, to the way of the world, the way of darkness, we ask forgiveness by the blood of your Holy Son, Jesus. Accept his wounds for our transgressions, O Lord. Accept his bruises for our iniquities. Father, let us be in peace because of the, the chastisement for our peace was upon our Savior, Jesus Christ. And O Lord Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, by his stripes we are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, let every sick thing in us, in our families, in our marriages, over the work of our hands, Father, over our ministries, over our relationship with you, Father, let that healing by the stripes of Jesus come forth mightily. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that by your stripes we are healed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen in Jesus' name.